Hey guys, welcome back to another Architect React. In this video, we're going to be looking at Bloxburg by Roblox. So I have a lot of entry coming in for Minecraft. I have a lot of people saying redo Fortnite. But we're going to go ahead and look at Bloxburg. I have two different creators submitting their own works. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at what they have to offer. Let's just go ahead and start the video. The first video I have for you guys is this by Winneman Bills. It's a cottage house. It's very interesting. I can really see that it's not like Minecraft at all. There is some level of modularity, but there's more creativity in these builds. So I've been trying to look at Bloxburg a little bit more, and it reminds me a little bit more of a what a SketchUp project is. So we're looking around. Another thing in particular that I'm not fond of, but I kind of understand, is the ability to personalize item in here. So even think everything down to even like the pillow sizes or the candle colors or the shampoo colors in the showers, you can literally change to meet the aesthetics of or the color scheme that you're trying to get. So I can see this application in interior design in particular. So right now I have pretty much no criticism. It's a decent sized kitchen. Um, the cabinets on the far right doesn't work, but overall, cabinet heights, countertop heights, um, everything seems to be working. It uh, reminds me of a very, very, like, a place where you would go for hunting or like a lodge that you might find somewhere out in Denver. So it's pretty nice. So, yeah, very modern bathroom. Again, notice how the bathtub is not like that in Minecraft. This is like something that I can see myself getting into. Bathroom might even meet ADA constraints. So this is a particularly nice feature about this software. There's some cartoony aspects to it that kind of appear, appeals to my graphic understanding. But this lodge, for me, I think it, like if you were to just bring this to an architect and actually tell them, hey, this is what I'm looking for interior design. This is what I'm looking for in terms of like the finished product. I don't see why he cannot make that a reality. There is nothing out of the ordinary that like appears to me like, oh, this won't be structurally feasible. Again, if you control where those windows are looking, they're, they're possible. I really like this space right here with the table chair looking out through a slanted glass window that also doubles as your roof for shedding water. Imagine this space with like rain. Beautiful. This space is a little tight. You can probably extend out, but something I have done in the attics before But yeah, particularly a nice build. Like a good grasp, one bathroom, one bedroom, one kitchen, one living room, centralized, and an entry door and an exit door, all controlled, no security issues, lighting is perfect too. So that's one video I have for you guys. This is the second video I have for you guys, and I'm gonna go ahead and play it. So, what we're looking at in this is another time and build. And in this particular video, we're going to be looking at how he speeds builds one of his two story houses. Now, one of the things that I wanted to look at is how do you actually maneuver through the software, right? Or in this thing, a game. So one of the things that I've noticed is the price for square feet makes absolutely no sense in this project. Like you're talking about $5 for a wall, $8 for that column. That's not, that makes no sense. Now, one of the things that I will say is, that stands out to me is they're using a grid. This is really good. Architects use grid all the time. This is the, by means which we give order to our buildings. Now, when it comes to the fact, if you were to look back at Minecraft, Minecraft had this volumetric cubes that you had to adhere to in every design. They had to be as wide as it is tall. 
And because of those restrictions, you couldn't design like this at all. Another thing I'm looking at right now is he's aligning structural walls. All the exterior walls are aligning, transferring load straight down. So in Blocksburg, things that are standing out to me is what you guys are doing at fundamental levels, the game's making you adhere to rules, which I have to adhere to in real life. I guarantee you, if you bring this to a structural engineer, he's going to be more than happy to say, oh yeah, these walls are aligning. I can go ahead and build this. A lot of the things that I've been finding in uh, Bloxburg, and I feel like I want to do a series of video where I'm actually examining these Bloxburg houses because they're standing out to me as something that is a feasible architecture, right? When we were talking about Minecraft, I was kind of reluctant to say, you know, this is not realistic because you can't have blocks that are adhering to this. You cannot go into diagonals, for example. But in this particular say, a case, you have tectonic architecture. Like, for example, these monumental elements, even though they might seem like, oh, this is not feasible in real life. Well, they can be done. This is something that I would rationally be able to do if I was in like a flood prone property. So railings are being added. Look at the speed of the project. I can't make this level of progress even in SketchUp or Revit. And the fact that you're visualizing it as you're building it. Again, the price per square feet has no concerns to me. Like whether it's a million dollar build or it's a $300,000 build, uh, it's not realistic. The prices don't really make sense at all. Right? Again, we have doors that cost 800 bucks and there's a wall in here that costs $16. That makes no sense, right? But when it comes to like planter boxes, I'm gonna go ahead and speed through this just a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and switch the speed to about two just so we can see this build a little bit faster. Okay, so that's, notice how there's thickness is being added to the floors and walls when needs to be. And, and modern houses, I mean, if you were to think about it this way, that the houses that we live in currently, the Georgian style home, as I call them, they're not fun buildings to look at. Like this is a very, very nice modern build that I personally can see myself living in is volumetric there's enough space there i'm gonna fast forward some more because i want to see how materials are getting added yeah same thing we have color swatches in revit as well so i'm gonna go ahead and skip a little bit garage doors just got added again lighting is pretty easy and uh, another thing is like i said in my previous uh in the another one of my videos in this tour video you can bring this to an architect I guarantee you a sensible architect that is not an old man will look at this and say, oh, this is your idea. Let me take a look at it as something that is a cohesive idea. And a lot of the things are making sense in terms of scale. I don't have to switch scales to understand. I don't have to adhere to what Fortnite was like, more like a match battle ro royale. In this case, it is nothing but building. So I feel like this software overtakes what I saw in Minecraft and Fortnite. So yeah, Roblox, y'all got this right. Future architects, you might not need Legos. You might just be coming off of this as your, as your inspiration of why you wanna become architects in the first place. I'm gonna go ahead and skip some more. Glass railings, lighting being added. The change in the lighting color to adhere to some type of like a color. Yeah, man, that's that's impressive. I guarantee you I spend days working out glo global illumination in my rendering. What he's doing through speed builds is like takes years worth of understanding when it comes to mastering in Revit or any other software. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Wonder how realistic that lighting is. Let's see how that works out. It's changing steel to back to concrete. Yeah, this is 
yeah, adding fauna and flora would definitely lighten the space. Now we're talking about like interior palette. Again, a very solid interior design software. If you were like pretty much using this as your inspiration of what you're gonna do in interior design, pretty spot on. Add some water in, in there, you got a small waterfall, that can work depending on your budget. That pergola came out of nowhere. Very impressive to me. Extremely modern design. I think I have enough to see here. This is, this is more than enough for me to see. Like the benches and stuff like that, the selection. Some of the things I'm not particularly a fan of is when you get carried away with like just sizing each one of the plants and sizing the pillows and stuff, it's an overkill. Like these ivy walls, kind of an overkill, but I can understand how this would be a picture perfect rendering for a client. The, a particular aspect of architecture or a small niche is the ability to render something that a client might want to see, something visual. So this, if was presented as a 3D model and you would be zooming in and out, this is what your building's gonna look like, this, this will sell the project. Notice how fast these bushes are being blazed. And the, and the prices for these bushes is crazy. Now, sizing of these bushes and all of that stuff, that can take a second, but let's, let's just go ahead and fast forward to the end. Sizing up the trees. This is something we do in Photoshop all the time. See the, the particular art style of how the trees are represented? See? So let's go ahead. There's not much left to say. After carefully looking at Bloxburg, this is the closest game I can find to actual architecture. The game has a lot of things that appeals to me. The one of the main facets of this game that appeals to me is the grid system. It reminds me of the Bauhaus movement that came after World War. And pretty much what you had was these people very interested in the square rectangle line alignment and like architecture styles that came out with like Richard Myers, Mies van der Rohe, Frank Lloyd Wright, and all of these people explored in that realm of making sure they have thin horizontal planes and things that have strong sense of alignment when it comes to windows, doors, and extending that out. So that's the portion that I feel like this architecture is exploring. It's what we have lost after the prairie house that we have had. When it comes to the side that makes it a game is where you can personalize items. Like for example, the personalization of shampoos, the cushion sizing, the plant sizing. All of those things appeals to me too because at the end of the day, people enjoy that more than the building. That's what makes the building more personalized, right? But at the same time, that is interior design. So I feel like there's a whole series left here because a lot of videos that are being sent I'm going to react to, and I feel like this is a start of a new series. Follow for more content.